Hello, in this video clip I will introduce you to some important principles of fine needle aspiration cytology or FNA and I will mainly be using thyroid FNA as my example. This video is aimed for clinicians who want to know more about the pathology process of preparing smears and also for trainee pathologists as well as trainee cytotechnologists. So we're going to look at some technical notes first on rows, which is rapid on-site evaluation. How do we actually assess adequacy and triage the specimens? Then I'm going to show you how we do smearing as well as staining. And then finally focus on some technical tips and hopefully clear up some misconceptions. In this first video, we will focus more on rows, on specimen adequacy and triage. So ROSE stands for Rapid On-Site Evaluation and usually the cytotechnologist will attend this procedure. In some centres, the pathologist also attends. And so what we will do is to assess specimen adequacy. We do this by rapidly staining smears. So we prepare the smears on site, stain them and then have a quick look down the microscope to decide whether they are adequate. Uh, whether we can tell the clinicians, uh, you can stop now, you have enough material. The other very important function of rows is specimen triage. And this actually helps to direct the clinician to obtain more material, so to go in and to do more passes uh, for ancillary testing, for example, with cell blocks, for microbiologic testing, and also for flow cytometry when we suspect hematolymphoid malignancy. So here is the equipment that is used for rows and of course we have the microscope, we have the quick staining solutions here, we have alcohol, this is 95% alcohol to fix the smears and alcohol fixed smears are usually not used for rapid on-site evaluation. The alcohol fixed smears are brought back to the pathology lab and we will stain them later on because uh, this stain, which is known as the Papa Nicolau stain, takes a lot longer to stain. And you will also notice that there is a hair dryer here. The hair dryer is used to help in rapid air drying of smears. We need the smears to dry quickly because air drying is a method of fixation, and fixation must always be rapid in order to prevent artifactual changes. So sometimes the smears are very thick and take some time to dry, so we use the hairdryer to hasten the drying process. We also have some specimen bottles, and this is for collection of specimens, and this is sterile saline, so that we can do a needle rinse in the sterile saline, and that needle rinse can be used for ancillary tests. Here is the staining solution. And if we just uh, focus on this side, you can see that there are four bottles here. This is used for the air-dried smears, which are what we use for rapid on-site assessment. There is methanol, hemocolor, this is the name of the stain, red, hemocolor blue, and water. And we only need to have about 10 seconds in each solution and then to rinse it in water and our stain is ready. So it takes less than one minute to do this stain. For alcohol, alcohol fixed smears are used for the Papa Nicolau stain. This stain, as I mentioned earlier, has got many more steps and this is done back in the pathology lab later on. So we are not assessing alcohol fixed smears on site. Therefore, when we do on site assessment, we are looking at only this stain, the hemocolor stain. And this is part of a broader group of stains known as the Romanowski stain. This is used for rapid on-site assessment. So we're actually only essentially looking at half the material on this particular stain and the rest of the material will be stained later in the lab. Therefore, at best, we are only giving a provisional report when we do rapid on-site assessment. So how do we do specimen triage? Well, we can actually collect the needle material in several ways. If there is actually fluid aspirated, for example, from a cystic lesion or purulent material from an infective lesion, then uh, we can actually collect the fluid meat. If it's needle wash, we can wash this in saline or various other solutions. Here you can see that the needle wash is in saline. 
And what we can do with the needle wash is to process it by centrifuging it and then staining it into smears, so we can have additional smears for this. We can also spin down the material, obtain a pellet, and then make it into a cell block. A cell block is very useful because it allows us to do ancillary tests like immunohistochemistry and even molecular tests, uh, sequencing, PCR-based tests, and also fish. Another good way to do a cell block is to actually just expel the needle material directly onto the tube, let this dry or clot, and then we put it straight into formalin and treat it like a mini biopsy. Needle washing in sterile saline can also be used for microbiologic tests, so this can be sent to the microbiology lab uh, for smears and for culture. And we can also even use this for flow cytometry to send to the hematology lab. Ideally, if we suspect a hematolymphoid malignancy, the best material to actually wash the needle in is RPMI. But we can also use sterile saline if we send it quickly enough to the hematology lab. And this you need to really check with your specific hematology lab. And finally, we can also use needle washing for biochemical tests, for example, to do a parathyroid hormone assay to see the concentration in the aspirated material. And again, for this, it's best to tie down beforehand with the biochemistry lab because they may require a specific volume of saline in order to do the test. So here is what an actual cell block looks like after processing. The whole idea is to get a solid tissue piece from a cytology sample. So it is like a mini biopsy, and uh, we'll have a clotted tissue piece or a cell pellet, which we then clot using plasma and thrombin. And this allows us to then process it as if it is a small histology biopsy. And then we can cut many different sections to do different ancillary tests on. So essentially, we process this like histology specimens. And when do we do this in the context of a thyroid FNA? Well, if we suspect medullary thyroid carcinoma or other less common neoplasms, for example, uh, those with specific immunohistochemical profiles like hyaluronizing trabecular tumor, if we suspect metastatic malignancy to the thyroid gland, if we think this may be a lymphoma, especially a high-grade lymphoma, and also if we suspect a parathyroid lesion, all these would potentially benefit from ancillary testing with immunohistochemistry. So a cell block is very useful in these contexts. Usually, if there is rapid onset evaluation and there is a quick assessment of the morphology, the cytotechnologist can actually prompt the clinician to go ahead and do more FNA passes so that we can process a cell block. Here is an example of a thyroid FNA, and uh, this is the papaniculal stained smear. This is the hemocolor stained air dried smear, and the morphology is kind of suggestive of medullary carcinoma, but we cannot make a diagnosis of medullary carcinoma without confirmation using immunohistochemistry. So in this case, a cell block was performed. This is the H and E stained section from the cell block, and this is the definitive stain calcitonin, which you can see is positive. Therefore, we can make a definitive diagnosis of medullary carcinoma. Without the benefit of the cell block and calcitonin immunohistochemistry, we would probably call it suspicious for malignancy. The next part will talk about how we do smears and how we do stains, and also the different types of stains that we use on cytology.